formal specification of syntax requires a set of rules. It turns out that what we intuitively think of as tokens can be constructed from individual characters using just three kinds of formal rules. Concatenation, alternation, which means choosing among a finite set of alternatives, and clean closure, re repeating a token an arbitrary number of times. Specifying the, most of the rest of what we intuitively think of as syntax requires one additional kind of rule, recursion, the creation of a construct from simpler instances of the same construct. Any set of strings that can be defined in terms of concatenation, alternation, and clean closure is called a regular set, or sometimes a regular language. Regular sets are generated by regular expressions and recognized by scanners. Any set of strings that can be defined if we add recursion is called a context-free language. Context-free languages are generated by context-free grammars and recognized by parsers. Terminology can be confusing here. The meaning of the word language depends on whether we're talking about formal languages or programming languages. A formal language is just a set of strings with no accompanying semantics. Tokens are the basic building blocks of programs, the shortest strings of characters with individual meaning. There are many kinds of tokens, including keywords, identifiers, symbols, and constants. Some kinds of tokens, like the increment operator, correspond to only one string of characters. Others, like variable names, correspond to a set of strings that share some common form. We will use the word token informally in this class to refer to both the generic kind of token, a variable name, the increment op operator, and the specific string, foo or plus plus. To specify tokens, we use the notation of regular expressions. A regular expression is one of the following. A character, the empty string, two regular expressions next to each other, meaning any string generated by the first one concatenated with any string generated by the second one, two regular expressions separated by a vertical bar, meaning any string generated by the first one or any string generated by the second one, or a regular expression followed by a clean star, meaning the concatenation of zero or more strings generated by the expression in front of the star. Parentheses are used to avoid ambiguity about where the various sub-expressions start and end. Consider, for example, the syntax of numeric constants accepted by a simple handheld calculator. The symbols to the left of the arrow signs provide names for the regular expressions. In this case, number is the name of a token. The others are simply for convenience in building larger expressions. Note that while we have allowed definitions to build on one another, nothing is ever defined in terms of itself, even indirectly. Such recursive definitions are the distinguishing characteristic of context-free grammars. To generate a valid number, we expand out the subdefinitions and then scan the resulting expression from left to right, choosing among alternatives at each vertical bar, and choosing a number of repetitions at each clean star. Within each repetition, we may make different choices at vertical bars, generating different substrings. Upper and lowercase letters and identifiers and keywords are considered distinct in some languages and identical in others. With the globalization of computing, non-Latin character sets have become increasingly important. Many modern languages, including c -sharp, have explicit support for multi-byte character sets, generally based on the Unicode and ISO international standards. Most modern programming languages allow non-Latin characters to appear within comments and character strings. An increasing number allow them in identifiers as well. Some language implementations impose limits on the maximum length of identifiers, but most avoid such unnecessary restrictions. Most modern languages are also more or less free format meaning that a program is simply a sequence of tokens. What matters is the token's order with respect to one another, not their physical position within a printed line or page. Most, program, most programming languages ignore white space, blanks, tabs, carriage returns, and line feeds between tokens, except to the extent that it is needed to separate one token from the next. There are a few exceptions to these rules. Some language implementations limit the maximum length of a line to allow the compiler to store the current line in a fixed length buffer. Line breaks serve to separate statements in several other languages, including Haskell, Occam, SR, Tickle, and Python. Haskell, Occam, and Python also give special significance to indentation. The body of a loop, for example, consists of precisely those subsequent lines that are, that are indented farther than the header of the loop.